Joining me now is Esther Uyana. She's a currencies trader and analyst from Alpari. And today we're talking about how you can manage your risk as, of course, as an investor. Thank you, Esther, for being here. It's been a while. Nice yeah. to have you back Thank here. You. Good morning. Of course, a lot, a lot continues to happen on the global scene that, of yeah. course, it affects uh, currencies uh, at the end of the day. Now, we've seen uh, Greece... Good news, Good getting news. the the, the one hundred the much needed strong pull up that was last week. Much needed bailout funds, yeah. and the German Parliament uh, agreed yesterday. Now today, the uh, Greek Parliament has also ratified yeah. more spending cuts. So it seems like all is going well for Greece, and perhaps you know Europe as a, as a whole. So how has I I want to believe that uh, that has been impacting positively especially on the euro? Yeah, the euro has been pulling up for a long while since last week. And um, actually, we are looking forward to another move up. But for now, what is going to pend is, um, remember that their ECB bank is loaning out money, uh, 500 billion euro. Yeah, to double and to um, okay. experts are like having a mixed feeling about it. Last year, they had one. Uh, and there's an increase again this year. So, and they are like, with this figure, um, they're still crossing their fingers to see what is going to happen in the market. So, we're still looking at that. When that happens, let's see what will happen to you. It's going to be another push up or it's going to be a pullback. Okay, but is there caution on, this, on the yes, part of investors? Yes, there's caution. There's caution on the part of investors. But they have been pulling profits, of course. Yes, they've been pulling profits as well. Last so, week was one. <laughs> so right now, uh, now is a good time to trade the euro. Right now is caution. Caution is ac ac caution is needed now. Right now, there's caution needed on euro. So where has that put the dollar? Because I know the dollar has, of course, been a favorite, uh, well, been the safe haven in the last couple of weeks, weeks. or even months. You know, as okay. you know, this debt crisis raging. No, there's on. a great thing coming up by 4 p.m. today. Ben Bernanke is speaking in the house. So everyone is also waiting for um, U.S. to see if they can still be seen as a safe haven or they will now fall back to the euro. Okay, so we're waiting for some positive comments from the Fed, uh, the Fed chief if yes. he's going to bring up more or dig deeper into his toolbox to yes. bring up more <laughs> monetary policy. Okay, uh, now let's just, today we're looking at the managing risks in investment. Uh, okay. Now most people looking for investment never think of the risks. And uh, is, is every investment risk-free or are there some investments that are, that are not risky at all? All investments are risky, very much. All investments are risky. In in starting up any investment, you have to first of all understand what you are going for. Okay, what is investment you're looking at? Are you looking at it and from the, is it an, a risky kind of trade or non-risk? But when you're talking about non-risk, as the rate, the, um, rate um, value is minimal. Because you, are, you have some as high... A level of exposure. Yes, level of exposure is minimal. Okay, like if you're looking at the currency market, that's a volatile market. A volatile market. If you're looking at the money market, you know you have some short term, long term, and medium term. So you must understand what investment you're looking at. Okay, there's no investment that is safe. But what makes your investment worth the while is understanding how to manage the risks involving all your investments. Now I know you've come in contact with uh, currency traders like yourself okay. and those who are aspiring to be currency traders. Now, mm -hmm. what is the general perception about risk today, especially for those who are going into it for the first time? Do they go into it with that kind of uh, perception or mentality that, you know, okay, maybe, you know, I, I've seen so many people trading and I have a couple of friends who have been trading and they haven't exactly been recording any losses. So that might give the impression that it's a risk-free market and so many people come into the market, the currencies market, with that mindset thinking that they can just come play in the market, no risks. Yeah, we come across that very well. You come across so many people with that notion. With that notion, okay, they've met the good ones. And maybe those ones have refused, or should I say, out of um, negligence, they've not told them the bad side about it. That money management, you can remember we talked about that on Monday, money management is very key in the currency market. And there was, an, uh, there was something uh, like a research done that they just brought in novice to come trade the currency market. So and you were taught, green green they never knew before, anything okay. about markets. And they were taught, the first thing taught was money management weeks. The funniest part, when they did it, they all got it right. Why? Market will always repeat itself. Come back to that same level you started with. And what was the, key, was the success about learning how to manage their risk? Okay, talking about managing risks, what are those three, should I call maybe like three cardinal rules that invest, an investor should have in his mind or in his hands at every point in time when, he's, you know, when he brings, in terms of as in his investment, trading at the currencies market? Okay. The first thing you have to start with is one understand the market you're going into okay that will give you a gauge point Two, understand yourself everyone is different my risk appetite and yours very very different you can stand 20 percent 
loss or drawdown, I can stand 50%. Everyone's mind is different. With that, that will form your third notion how to work with that. And you have to control your emotion as far as that is concerned. Learning how to control your emotion is very, very key. And do you have any uh, trouble? How, how, how has it been training uh, currency or potential currencies traders uh, in terms of uh, helping them manage their emotions? You know, if you have a, you ha when you have a case scenario of someone already coming with a preset mind, uh, not a blank mind, uh, two different things. I come with a blank mind as a novice. I don't know anything. I'm coming to learn. But people come with this attitude of, okay, I know what I'm doing. I have a knowledge of this and this background. I usually tell people in respect of the course you read. Why, why do you think they have that kind of uh, attitude when they come at mm, first? Let's put it like the Nigerian attitude. The <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know, I know this. I studied okay. this. Okay. So it, it sort of like gives them that, like, you get, have a, an added advantage over this. But no, you're coming to a different market entirely. Far different from what you see on your everyday market. For some people tell you, is it not this normal exchange of money with the Malams? So I tell people, no. You're coming to a different ball game entirely. So you must learn the ropes in this market and how to avoid the pitfalls in it. Okay, so first you break down that notion. You break it down. Erase every kind Erase every <laughs> kind of, I know before or I have learned. Even, I don't, I tell people, at times I don't mind I walk into my other train, consultants or trainers and sit down and listen to them afresh. It gives me an idea, okay, yes, I'm learning something new every time. Okay, so even as a seasoned trader, you can't stop learning. You There's can't stop something. learning. You always learn. Okay. Now, I know we have talked about the, <coughs> the PAM account before. Okay. As an <coughs> excuse me, as an investment arm of currency trading, is it only a party that has this PAM account? And uh, what makes it come, this PAM account unique? A party is not the only one that has a PAM account, the manager account. We have so many brokers who offer the services. Okay. But what makes a party zone unique is you having access to your own system. Okay, you don't have access to the trading platform, the software used in trading. For example, if I'm trading, I have access to my trading system. I look all the, at the, all the currencies I'm trading, and at one point or the other, I can make my decision in closing some of the trades or allowing some of the trades run. But in the PAM accounts, you don't have access to that. You only have access to the page where you can see in, in, in summary, also in the trading statement, what the fund manager is giving you on a daily basis. You can also monitor his activity. What makes it so unique? is the risk management. I've had I've not checked through so many palm accounts I've not seen that, the risk management. Where as an investor, I can monitor just like I talked about in the stock market you lose, you lose everything. Bonds market, treasuries everything. You lose, you lose everything. You gain, you gain. But can you have like a stop out level? Okay, if it's coming down to this level I like to put it okay? or make an exit. Exit. Or okay, now I'm looking at this market now. It's increasing. Can I move with it? Because the stops in the palm account, you can't move with it. Once it's coming down, it's already, it's already preset. Once it's gaining back up again, you can move your stop closer to the line. So we have been talking about PAM uh, as being an investment arm of currencies market and how you did say that the PAM account of Alpara is unique. Mm -hmm. But you, one thing, you did also say that uh, for a trader who has a fund manager trading on his behalf on a PAM account, okay. did you say that he can, he can actually have access to that account or can only look at the page? He can only look at the page. Even the fund manager doesn't have access to individual investors account. The way it is done is from a pool of fund. Okay. Okay. The pool of fund is attached to your trading system. So like the software used for trading the MetaTrader 4, there is no icon there where you can withdraw or deposit there. Okay. There are all different payment systems by brokers where you can make your funds deposit and withdraw. So the fund manager only has access to trading the total equity funds deposited by investors and his in his spam account for him to trade. So you are the vest on the other end. You can view the manager's performance through your own end, okay, through your own personal area, what the manager is doing on a daily basis. So there's no issue of um, investor. I can have direct access, okay. For example, I can see my system, the fund manager is placing Euro USD or dollar this, and I don't like what is in, I want to close it. You can't do that. The only thing you can do is just view at a glance because there's a, it's always in percentage okay. what he's doing on your account. Now, what uh, what are the risks attached to this the PAM account trading on the PAM account? Any risks that investors should uh, be aware of? The first risk is on understanding how the rating systems work. 
Okay, usually because some people just go to the website and say, okay, from um, our chat, okay, from our websites where you have the PAM account ratings, they'll see the ratings for one month, you see the ratings for three months, six months. By ratings, what, exa what exactly okay. do you mean by ratings? Um, traders, traders are rated based on their performance. Each month? Each month. We have for the one month, we have for three months, we have for six months, we have for full year. We will have the popularity list. Popularity list is based on the fact that you have maybe in the past one month, how many investors have deposited in this fund manager's account and the last list we have as you can see there is the list list for um, a complete list on the complete list what you have there is from the, the ranking on the complete list is based on their returns as long as their trading time so you may have somebody under 450 days trading and has given a like a maximum of 4700 percent so it's basically that trader or that fund manager who's made the most money for yeah for the, as long as he's been trading but shouldn't that have uh, shouldn't that be like uh, based on the pattern because he may have done well in the last three months and going forward in the next three months he may not you know perform as well as he did so okay. giving him that badge okay. or that medal for being the most popular or the most profitable uh, fund manager as well. Uh, what we, did, we just brought out that rating system for people to just have a view about the PAM account. That's why we usually run our investment class for people to look out for. What do you look out for in investment? Because some people don't even have a knowledge about investment, so we have to put them through. You start with first understanding the rating system, how it works, okay? What's your projection on a monthly basis, okay? Are you looking at putting this PAM account for a full year or for two months or for one month or for six months? What's your projection like? Okay, if you're looking at, okay, you need a long-term trading. Okay, let's put it at one year. Let's target at one year. For one year, this is what you want. So what's your expectation for a fund manager in a year? In terms of money, of course, um, returns. returns. Then the second part is you must take into consideration his drawdowns. Okay, the losses he has on every PAM account. Okay, for example, I may place a trade now and... In the next two to three days, I'll be in loss or finally closing profit. And that is drawing down my equity. So those are the things you take into consideration. Not only the return on investment, his drawdowns matters. Okay, so we are re we reach an I reach an agreement with my fund manager on how much I expect him to return to me. You don't reach an agreement with your fund manager because he's already there. Okay, he's already there. He's already there. The ratings, if you look at the chart again, the rating systems are already there. Okay. It's from their own ratings you form your own idea okay but i sh obviously i should have my own expectations as yeah, to what yeah. i should okay so, so i have my i can search if you look at up there um under the rating systems where we have their names dates since opened and returns i can decide to pick out my own search for example, if I click on that icon there, on the red icon there, where we have the red icon with the box under, if I say 50%, greater than 50%, if I type that in, it's going to bring out the list of only fund managers who in the past one month has brought in 50% rates of return. So that's how the search is. Not the fund manager who has had a history of making history. that much. It's, it's just one month because if it's one month uh, behind just one month, mm -hmm. that's not exactly a pattern or a pattern. One, that's why I said it history. has to do with an individual. Make your choice. Okay. It's your pick. Okay, but we'll just help you to put you through on how to work best, how to work best with it. Usually I tell people um, for one month, it's not a good tag for any fund manager. One month, it's not a good tag. So look at it at a longer term. Because look. if I have an expectations, I see a fund manager who's made 50% for the mm -hmm. previous month. Of course, my mindset will be, okay, this man is going to make 50% for me it's not the passing. following month. And that would, that would be my expectation. And okay. if he falls short, I'll be disappointed. Yes, that's why we tell clients don't do that. Because 50% this month is not a guarantee of the next ten of uh, the next three or four months in 50%. Never, never. So you know, look at it on a long term. Have you seen his rate of return for one month, three months, six months? That will give what you. A what, what would be the standard? Is it three months, six months? What should a, 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 an investor peg? You know, when when choosing a mm -hmm. fund manager in terms of returns. Looking at the history of a, tra a trader's returns, okay. should, should I look at what he's, how he's fed in the last three months or in the last six months? I look at three months, I look, I'll tell you, look at six months and look at his overall. Overall, because at times most of them go beyond six months, even in a year. So mm -hmm. you can look at their overall chart. Like if you pick up the next chart that has shows you a fund manager, mm -hmm. okay? A fund manager for as long he's been trading. That. This is a chart here. For this fund manager, this is how long. This is his chart for the number of days he's been trading. So it has to give you an overformed view to that. Okay, from zero percent, he has grown to as high as certain percentage. It gives you another idea. Then if you look at his hard drawdowns on the chart. 
it's been coming, it's going up, coming down, going up, coming down. So it gives you a good idea. For example, if I started with this fund manager at 100 percent, okay, and he's increased it to a certain percentage, let's put it at 500 percent. Before he comes down again, so let's put it at 300 percent. I'll have put a tag and a peg on him. That's how the fund, um, uh, palm account works. Okay, so. Uh, whatever drawdowns he has, once I have, we have set uh, what risk my limits. My risk limit and also my expectations in terms of returns. No matter what drawdowns he's had, okay. should I still be expecting that return? Of course, I will take mm. into account the fact that I know he will have drawdowns. I know he will incur some losses. Okay. But should I be excluded from what I should be expecting in terms of returns at the end of the day? Or is it part of it? In when you're taking into consideration returns, you have to take into consideration the drawdowns too. Yeah, but we have reached... Okay, maybe not between directly. It's, it, it's not an agreement because if you look the way the farm account works. Oh, expectations. Works. I told you know okay. I've said this is the amount of money I want at the end of this month. Okay, loss or no loss. Is but that it's not possible. <laughs> it's not possible to have an expectation of fifty percent. Just like if you look at your bonds or equity, if you have a percentage returns, you're not expecting that to happen. Because this market you're talking about is a dynamic market. Forces beyond everyone's control happens in the market. So you don't expect, okay, for example, I'm expecting 50% in the month, and he had a drawdown of 20%. So no matter what happens at the end of the month, I'm expecting to see 50%. It's not possible. Not possible. But I should see a significant portion of that. Maybe not, obviously not 50%, but you know, maybe 25%. That's why I talked about the drawdowns. So if I'm looking at a, a so trade that, that would mean that you're saying that... Uh, Okay, maybe not 50%, obviously, but I could actually have a draw. Are I could actually have a drawdown or a return of as low as 10%? It's possible. Possible. That's why I said drawdown matters. Very important in the PAM account. Drawdowns. Very important. Because you shouldn't pick a fund manager just only on his returns. Look at his worst, the worst day he had a drawdown. That will give you an idea of the kind of fund manager you're looking at. So everyone usually have an expectation. So I'm going to tell you, okay, for the past three months or six months, I don't want a fund manager who has had a drawdown beyond 10%. So he doesn't, okay. they don't look at, okay, even if the return is above 100% or even 50%, but that drawdown to them matters. matters. So you, you, you would advise to, what, for more, for more focus to be on what focus on his, his, on his drawdown. On his drawdown. But don't fully focus on his drawdown because there are days that are selling days for these farm managers. Yeah. If they have four, one, two, three months, they're doing so well. Then just one month, just like Something what happened on last week. So many traders were expecting the market to have a retracement zero, but it kept on going and going and going and going. So many people had it, their fingers burnt. There's usually those kind of things that happens in the market. So many people had their fingers burnt, and they were like, wow. But did Alpari see that coming? Did you see that coming in what sense? Were you, did Alpari also get their fingers burnt? Uh, let me say, Alpari is a company, but let's say individual, okay, individual traders. traders so many individual traders uh, were. Alpari. But some people who had their money management in place didn't suffer. Okay, we're able to hedge against that. Yes. Okay, interesting. Uh, now, let's talk about how you, we're almost out of time here, defining your risk limits within the PAM uh, investment account. Okay. Um, if you go to the, ne la the, sec uh, the, the next chart that shows us um, the PAM account manager, like now, this is a page showing you like a fund manager. He's opened an account to the PAM account manager. He's made his deposits, okay? It will tell you the name of the PAM account manager. When he started, when the date you created this portfolio with him, okay. So in certain risk limit, he starts with okay. When did I start with this fund manager? Maybe I started with a thousand dollars, and now he has increased it to a thousand one hundred. Okay, setting your risk limit, you look at your equity because there you have your farm account equity, you have your net equity, you have your outstanding remuneration shows you the amount of money you own your fund manager. So for my equity, it shows me this is the current money he's trading with. Net equity is showing me my Initial funds plus the profit he's made on it. So if I'm to set my calculation, my risk limits on my fund manager, I look at my equity, my current equity. Okay. On my current equity, further down, I'll have my general monitoring. There's something known as monitoring. Monitoring your account. Where we have the share counts, we have the share price. Okay. The share count is giving you an idea of the value of your own money in the total equity the fund manager okay. is and the share price is the value of the fund manager okay? okay as a fund manager is trading his share price increases when he's losing his share price drops oh, okay so the simple mathematics calculation will tell people during our classes okay if you multiply your share count times your share price is going to give you your current equity on the PAM account so let's assume my current equity right now is a thousand 
$100. And I'm looking at the PAM account, and I started it with, like, let's assume it's $800. Please, fund manager, you've increased that uh, total life put it at $300. If you're going to drop, I don't want you to go beyond this level. Let's assume I've pegged it out at $1,000. Okay. okay. So, a simple mathematics calculation. Remember, share count and share price equals to equity. Okay. Well, that so,